Cool. So let's start. Uh, my name is Matt Kavanagh. Um, now, the word tired gets thrown around a lot these days. Um, so I just want to give you some context for this talk. A week ago, I launched uh, the game I've been working on for three years. Actually, at the last DevConf, I told people I was working on the game uh, during my talk, and because of the name of the game, they came to me afterwards and assumed I had been joking. Anyway, weren't joking. Launched the game on the flight to GDC in San Francisco. Flew back last night, landed here um, after a 40 hour, 15 hour layover. Uh, and then last night at 2 a.m. decided to change the talk to include an Android app, which I've never written. So if I marmalade a word or 12, just uh, forgive me, please. So, the extended history of UTF-8 and the people that defined it. <laughs> I was actually hoping Rob was here, and I was going to make a joke. It was much funnier in the plane when I hadn't slept. <laughs> okay, so a Wi-Fi-controlled Arduino-powered handheld potato cannon, because everything is better with Wi-Fi. So, can I get a show of hands who has made a potato cannon in their life? Good people. So, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of children, myself included, and adults, hopefully, um, have built these things. It's just super cool to make things explode, and not just explode, make something like traject. I don't think that's a word. Um, so there's actually a super interesting story about where potato cannons came from, and it started in World War II, in the 1940s. And... The British Department of Miscellaneous Weapons Development, <laughs> can't make this up, um, developed this thing called the Holman Projector. And that's what you're looking at there. It was basically a metal pipe that you connected to the steam boiler of a ship. You would pull a pin out of a grenade, throw the grenade down the pipe, uh, push steam in to build up the pressure, aim the thing, and then let the pressure go. You sort of then pray that the pressure was correct, because it sort of hits and miss, um, and that the grenade actually leaves the barrel and you don't have to run, that it doesn't land on the ship. Um, and then if you're really lucky, it actually leaves and goes at the plane you're shooting at, and then you've still got the timing of like when the grenade will explode. So I don't think it was uh, ever super useful, but uh, Winston Churchill is quoted as saying, a very good idea, this weapon of yours. And they demonstrated it to him, uh, but like they forgot ammo. So they put beer bottles in it, and they projectiled beer bottles. So like after this, they started playing around with a bunch of different things, and when there was no action, and they discovered you can pretty much put anything. So they started putting cabbages and potatoes, and potatoes uh, became sort of a fun thing. So when ships were passing, they would shoot at their other friendly ships with potatoes. So taking us to 2018, uh, this is my potato gun. So it is very small because the talk name is handheld. It's also got Wi-Fi. I don't know why. It was a better idea at the time to have a handheld thing with Wi-Fi. But... Yeah, you don't actually hold it, but it is nice and small. And um, I just want to have a note about safety. So there's people in this room, and it's super cool to explode things on stage, but I decided instead of doing that, well, I am going to do that, but I, I removed the barrel, and I've been shoving a stress ball in. So like worst case scenario, you get shrapnel. But um, you, you, you're not actually going to be hit with a potato. Uh, so I also assumed that it would be confiscated at customs. Where's this thing? So I flew with that. Um, it was not confiscated. So my whole talk is it's got a bunch of videos and everything because I was assuming I wouldn't have that with me. It's kind of nice that it's here, uh, but regardless. Also, the talk isn't, I'm not going to show you detailed, but like, this is all the code. 
it's sort of going to be a blog post, but one that talks to you uh, in person. So like a talk. <laughs> so now back on safety, when I was making this, I was testing different, uh, different fuel. And you know, you get, uh, you get deodorants, and you get uh, car ignition starter, don't use that. Um, and then I was trying lighter fluid. And it like, there was lots of liquid in the barrel, so it carried on burning after the explosion. I thought it would be a great idea to blow it out. So <laughs> I, looked, I looked down the barrel and blew, and obviously the flame can't go anywhere because <laughs> the back was closed, and like whoosh. My beard has just regained its length. Um, here's a video that I found humorous. This was uh, long ago, years ago, um, when we were, go back, when we were kids. Oh, how do mouses even work? Dad, it's facing your car. It's going straight up. And then we realized that, you know, it's going straight up. <laughs> I, there's also a taser used in this. I've shocked myself multiple times because the Windows Phone web browser, how it works, if you, go, if you open the web browser again, it reloads the page. So it redoes the request. So like you're holding this thing, walking into the house, and you tap browser by mistake. Anyway, <laughs> so here is, uh, you know what? This was a video. This is the potato cannon. Doesn't that just sound badass at the end? So this is kind of another thing on safety. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to test it before gluing things because, you know, once you glued something, you committed. Um, so, so, so here, the whole front like goes flying off, and it's actually super cool in slow motion. Okay, so electronics and code and stuff. To start with, who has used Arduino? Cool, two of you. Um, there are two IDEs. Well, I mean, there's a bunch, but there's two that I consider the, the main ones. You get a thing called Visual Micro, which is an add-on for Visual Studio, and you get stuff like IntelliSense, uh, Control ED, the like, format, auto-formatting, um, and a bunch of really nice stuff, and it's super cool to use. You can even debug line by line, by line uh, like attach a debugger to your Arduino uh, if you buy the, the pro version. Then there's the official Arduino one, which is a piece of crap. Um, we're going to be using that because I hate myself. To, to make this, there's a few different components. There is a thing called a Wemos. Now, a Wemos is that little blue thing at the top there. It's an Arduino, but it's also got an ESP8266, which is a Wi-Fi module. They're super cheap. So that guy costs about 40 rand, maybe 50 rand, uh, shipped from China. So they're kind of really disposable. You can buy 10 and just use them as little different projects. Um, also, unlike some of the smaller Arduinos, there's an actual USB plug on it, so you can uh, you can plug it in without, you know, just wiring to your USB port. Then we need something that creates the spark to, to ignite the aerosol. You, there's a, way, a bunch of ways you can do this. Uh, you can use an actual spark plug from a car, but then you need high voltage. Um, you can get someone to go stand there and light it, but then it's not Wi-Fi. But so... Um, so I used a taser, because we've all got a taser in our house. If you don't, they're super fun to play with. Uh, and you can get them for like 100 rand a China mall. Inside a taser is a really big capacitor. You can just go to like an electronic store, buy that capacitor, 
I have no clue, like, it's a fairly specialist one. Uh, you're probably going to struggle. It's probably going to be more expensive than just buying a China Mall uh, Taser. Then you get a relay. Can I either use a transistor or a relay? I had a relay lying around. And what a relay is, is it, it's basically an electronic switch. So from your Arduino, you can tell something to go on and off. In this case, we're going to connect it to the taser and tell the taser to go on and off. So to do the spark, you turn it on, wait half a second, and turn it off again. Now, some of you that have used Arduino might have connected an LED directly to a pin on, on your Arduino. That, uh, although that would be 5 volts and would activate the taser, you would instantly burn out the pin. So that's why you use something like a relay. A relay, a relay can be like a light switch where it will take power directly from the power source, like the battery bank, and, um, which is like high amperage, and put that straight to the taser without ever going through the Arduino and burning out its pins. Then we have that super realistic photo of PVC pipes. And now, the, the size and diameter and everything of these pipes here is super important. But I have no idea what the right one is, so just cut random pieces and try stuff out and, <laughs> until it works. I mean, like, when you spray and stuff, you're going to be using different aerosols each time. Like, there's going to be a different amount of air. This isn't an exact science, so, like, a few centimeters extra of pipe isn't going to, uh, like, change your life. And then a servo. So the little 3D printed mechanism I've got there is, like, it spins around, it pushes the thing, the thing, descriptive, um, sprays the aerosol, uh, and then it stops spraying. That is what the servo is for. Now, a servo is kind of like a motor, except it's got specific degrees. Here, it's very important that we go to a certain position, like spin a certain amount of degrees uh, to correctly spray, and then unspin a correct amount of degrees. And that's where a servo comes in. You can like turn it off, spin it manually so it's at a random degree, turn it back on, and it'll always go back to the same place. So this is the, the taser opened up. Now, that's a battery, so like it's just wrapped and stuff, but there's a bunch of batteries in there. At the back here, it's got a charging port to plug into power. It's got a little like power unit there with um, some circuitry to do the actual charging. It's got an LED because like while you're shocking someone, you know, you can shine up. I don't know why it's got that. Um, and then that's the capacitor. This is the guy you want. That's, that's really all. And there's a, a little switch there. So uh, removing all the stuff we don't need, or most of it, we've got the battery. Uh, the green is the ground, just goes in there, and then the red comes from there, and that's the switch. So essentially, if you were to cut the green off there and the red off there, strap it to a battery, it will constantly shock. Now, the next thing is that a taser usually has little prongs. What you can actually do is uh, you can just cut those off and wire um, s s with your super good soldering skills. Um, you, you can wire it directly to a, a longer wire and then put those somewhere. So I've got like this much wire to extend those probes inside the potato cannon. This is um, those wires coming out and then um, you know, you, you just have to put them nearest each other, and then that's activating it on and off. And it just sounds super cool, so I wanted to put it there. Okay, so the schematic. We've got the little Wemos. Now, that's the, the brains of the operation. And over there. Then, on one of the pins, it connects to the servo. As I said, the servo is going to rotate and spray it. So that's like the spray pin. Uh, it's also got power which goes to the battery. So the servo is powered from the battery, and then it's got the signal pin which uh, goes to the Wemos, and the Wemos can just say, go to like 160 degrees or whatever. Then on the next pin, uh, we have a signal going to the relay, and then also power. So this signal line is going to say, when we, when we output like high, when we turn it on, uh, it's going to say, yes, turn the switch on. Now, to turn that switch on, it's basically taking this red wire, so 
it's taking the positive, um, goes into the relay. When this relay is on, it allows that positive to connect through to that wire, which then goes um, to the taser. So yeah, basically when you turn uh, D2, the pin D2 on the Wemos on, uh, it'll activate the relay and turn the taser on. Okay, so the Arduino code. That's not Arduino. You know, I can make a game for three years, but I can't figure out PowerPoint. Okay. So I think I closed it. But so I'm going to quickly go over uh, go over this code. Let's just zoom in a bit there. So. At the top here, uh, we first have a bunch of includes. Now that's just, just libraries. So once you install in the board manager the support for this Wemos chip, uh, it'll have stuff like this Wi-Fi clients and the SPA266. And that allows you to create a web server. Because what we're actually going to do is that is going to be its own Wi-Fi network. So to connect to it, um, please don't connect to it, but like on your phones, <laughs> on your phones now, um, there's, there's a Wi-Fi network called Potato Aim. Uh, so that's that hotspot. But seriously, don't connect to it. Not, you won't be able to because you don't have the password. But it's not the fastest chip in the world. So like, if multiple people are trying to connect, uh, yeah. Um, then we declare, for the hotspot, we declare the SSID and the password. Then an object for the server. Then we've got uh, like which pins. So the server, we're saying, is attached to D1 and the, uh, the taser is attached to D2, and then we just declare a server object. And then in setup, which is run once when the Arduino is turned on, we first tell the built-in LED pin that it's output and the spark pin. Now, what output means is it's just like we're going to write to you. So we're going to turn you on and off. Uh, and obviously, the spark pin, which is connected to that relay, we want to turn the relay on and off. Also, the LED, you guys won't see it, but um, it's just easier to debug, to be able to see it flashing a certain amount of times, uh, depending on what the client has asked it to do. Then, this is just kind of stock code for setting up a little access point uh, or a little hotspot. And then, finally over here, we tell it when, when a client connects. So, like, that's got a specific IP address. When my phone or something on the same network, when it connects to there, what method must it run here? So we're saying run a method called handle request, which will then handle the request. Um, then in loop, it's just standard code. You have to uh, just tell it to update the clients, and that just sees if there's any new connections and stuff. OK, so inside handle request, uh, we're building like a little API. I have to say API because this is a business conference. Um, so we're making a little potato cannon API, you connect to the IP address, and then there's a query string. So like in this case, it's saying command is equal to XXX. That's obviously just an example if, yeah. Um, but whatever you're into. So um, then this line checks what the command argument is. So like the query string of CMD, like what it is. In this case, it would find XXX. So CMD, if it's spray, then we run a method called spray with a parameter of 1,000, which is how long we want to spray for. Uh, if it's spark, then we run a method called spark. If it's fire, then first we look for another argument called time. So in the little app I made, I wanted to be able to change the amount of spray. You know, because when, you, uh, when you're trying to work out how much air to fuel ratio, it's really nice to not have to change the code. You just move a slider, okay, let's try more fuel, less fuel. Uh, so first it looks for that. If it can't find it, it just does the default of a second. So that'll be the server rotating, waiting a second, rotating back. Uh, and yeah, it does that with 1,000. And then if it does find it, it just converts uh, the number you sent it to an int and sends it through. So if you send 4,000, it'll spray for four seconds. Now, I want to just mention uh, science words. Um, ratio. So, like, inside there, you need air and you need fuel. Don't assume that 
just the more you spray, the, the more powerful it's gonna be. It's actually, like, you've actually got to spray a very little amount. I think, like, in Durban, I found that about 400 milliseconds is the optimal amount for that, that size, and a bigger potato cannon, you'll want to spray a bit more. Uh, and also, it varies per um, geographic region. So I think, it's, I think it's tied to the moisture in the air. But in Durban, it's not really powerful. And then we went to, like, this, this farm, and then the thing almost exploded. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what it'll do here. Um, I'm hoping you guys have a C somewhere. Okay, so then finally we just tell the client that uh, everything's A-OK. -okay. So the fire method, it basically just sprays and then it sparks. So, you know, first spray the aerosol, uh, and then spark and shoot the potato out. The spray method, it flashes the LED five times, then it activates the servo, it tells the servo to go to 160 degrees. That was just hit and miss, like I designed it and then played around which was the right um, amount of degrees to move to to start spraying. Uh, then it waits for the amount of milliseconds you've told it, so 1,000 or 4,000 or whatever, and then it writes 110 degrees, so it tells it to spin back to 110 degrees. Uh, and then just turn the LED off and detach the servo. If you've ever used servos, you'll notice sometimes that if you're using cheap components, um, that things vibrate. So like the servo will sort of jitter. Um, instead of buying expensive components, we can be poor and then you just deactivate uh, the, the spark plug instead. I mean. The, the servo instead. Now, the, the sparking, um, oh, that's what you're saying, I was scrolled to the wrong place, my bad. Okay, so the sparking is super simple. We're just turning a relay on, it'll start sparking, then we turn it off. So flash the LED two times, spark, wait a second, uh, turn it off. And that high is, is telling it to be on, the low is telling it to be off. And then there's just some helper functions for, for flashing the LEDs. Okay, so back to this. Okay, so once we've got that connected um, and that code is on there, we can run it. And now, because we added an API, we can now have Sparking as a service. And um, You'll, you'll see on my phone over there, on, so that's actually the second last Windows phone that exists. Um, you'll, you'll see I'm connecting to that IP address, and under my finger it'll be saying CMD is equal to uh, Spark. So every time um, I refresh the browser, it sparks. Okay, so actually building it. So this is a program called uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. Has anyone heard of it, used it? No one, cool. It's, it's a really cool program, it's free, uh, uh, except for commercial use, I think. And it's kind of a CAD package that a non-CAD person can understand, like me. So I know nothing about this, but I use, uh, I've worked out how to design stuff for 3D printing. And this is just a time lapse of designing the, the little outfit that's, that's around the pipe over there. And then this is a motion version of it. So what you'll see there is that's the servo, the servo spinning over here. It spins like a cog around. That cog rotates this, what I call a rack. Um, that pushes down this blue thing, and the blue thing's got sort of a tapered edge, so it gets wider at the bottom, uh, around there, and then, so as it rotates, it, it sprays the can. There's a nozzle from the can, which I took from a, um, a Q20 tin. <laughs> um, and then this hole over here, so inside, inside that pipe, there's a hole, right? And on this rack, there's another hole. As it gets to the point where it starts spraying, those two holes align, it allows the spray to go through, 
and then when it reverses and stops spraying, the holes unalign and it seals it. Uh, so that, because obviously you can't leave a hole open, because when it explodes, it's going to escape through there. Now, this is all 3D printed. And here's a time lapse of it 3D printing. Um, pro tip, put your camera on the base. Uh, so you're not like, yeah. So, I used ABS to print this. You, you get other types of plastic, like PLA, but ABS has a fairly high melting temperature. It's still not ideal to build a thing that literally is made to have fire in it, but uh, it hasn't seemed to be a problem. It, it did melt the one time when it carried on burning, but I've got, uh, if you go to a hardware store, you get like heat resistant paint, which you paint bras and stuff with. So under that sliding rack, I've, I've put that black paint and it hasn't been a problem since then. I, I'm guessing that the sort of 0.3 second explosion, it's, there's just not enough heat to, uh, to actually melt it and get through, through that paint. Now, you remember, remember this that I showed you? This, this is the real version. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna explain it again, but it's doing exactly the, the same thing. It could be designed a little bit better. You'll notice that it starts spraying like just before the hole. Um, that, in this version here, I've widened the hole so it does it a lot less. But it's actually not that much of a problem. I mean, you spray so little, and because you're spraying an alcohol-based um, thing, it evaporates in a few seconds anyway. So that like, liquid you see there, it just disappears by the time you get to it anyway. Um, we've also got an elastic band. Um, the, the duct tape of craft over here to, to make sure that, it, that that flap always gets pulled up because you don't, don't want it getting stuck and then continuing to spray. So that just like lifts it up. And now this is a video of it all together. So it's going to do the same spraying thing, but then uh, it'll also spark, explode, and um, shoot a potato. I should be in like the visual arts, guys. Look at that. It's like the crappy science demonstrations that they used to show you in school. Um, but yes, I did this because I assumed I wouldn't have the, the actual thing here. Um, so, now the app. This is the thing I wrote at 2 a.m. Uh, where's my mouse? Okay. Okay, so we've got a super simple little app. Now remember, all, all this app has to do is connect to a URL, um, the IP address, and it's just got to have command is equal to fire, um, or, sp or spray, or spark. So this little slider over here, allows us to choose how much fuel uh, you want in it, and then you can click fire, or you can click uh, spray or spark. And then these just hit those URLs. So um, those are tied to this code, this code, uh, which Essentially, just in Unity, there's this www object because that's how the Unity API works, and it just calls that IP address. So, super simple little little front end guy, and then it deactivates all the buttons, uh, and then activates them once the request is finished. See, you came here looking for a potato cannon, and you got to see Arduino, and Unity. And you probably thought Potato Cannon was like a new JavaScript library. <laughs> okay, so if I can get back into this presentation. Oh, well, that's the last slide. So um, this is actually a video from the 1940s when they first tested the, that project, uh, Folsom projector, whatever it was called. Um, 
Yeah, see, and you're learning like history facts here, guys. Okay, so uh, let's just close this again. I'm gonna bring up my camera. Camera. Hello. Cool. So, now we have this, I'm just gonna show you how this works. So, I've got my app here. I am connected to the Wi-Fi network of this. If I open up my little Unity app, that's the one I showed you before. So now, if I hit Spark, oh. So glad you videoed this year. <laughs> so, so, just a reminder, there's metal probes on the outside. <laughs> okay. So, so, if I spark without touching them, you know, this is usually on a table. Um, Okay, so if you look into there, I hit Spark. Yeah, so there's the little, little Sparky guy. And then if I hit Spray, so I'm just gonna disconnect the actual sprayer here so it doesn't spray. Um, might still spray a little bit. Just rotate that around. So I'm not going to press Spark this time. So if I hit Spray, it rotates around and pushes that guy. And spray again, we'll push it again, and then reverse. OK, so that's basically the talk. I'm going to try to shoot it now. Uh, as I said, like, I don't know what your atmosphere <laughs> is like here. Um, best case scenario, it doesn't, um, it doesn't work well. Um, <laughs> worst case scenario, shrapnel. So I'm just going to elastic band the thing back in. While I do this, does anyone have any questions? What was that question? Sorry? I do know where the glass jugs are. You know, I even tested the ceiling with the stress ball, and you just like look at those and they lift up. So I'm going to try to hit that cement piece over there because I don't know what your liability waiver is for this place. Um, okay, so we've got the sprayer connected. It's lined up with the hole. The sparking works. Uh, we've got a DVT stress ball. Advertising. Um, we jam that into the end. We've glued the top this time. So the only part that can fall off really is the back, which is <laughs> taped. OK, yeah. Once again, best case scenario is that it doesn't work well. Um, I've got this industrial grade Walmart suitcase that I'm just going to put this behind. <laughs> it was like 300 Rand, great deal. We'll just put that there. And then, so as I said, the different amounts of fuel leads to different, yeah, different explosiveness. Uh, I'm going to put it on 400. That kind of works in Durban. And then, you can hit the red button. Oh, that's exciting. So if you stay really quiet, you'll hear it spraying, hopefully. I'm going now. Well, so 400 doesn't work here. Keep going. So just try. <laughs> yeah, just try fire again. Wait for it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sparking. It's just that the fuel to air is like, dodge. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. Um, if you like, I can just blow the air out while you ask me questions, and then, okay, start asking. Oh, so that's another thing. Um, right before I left for GDC and stuff, um, this was part of the design. It's a little air blower. After it shoots, automatically blows out the air. So, like, all you have to do is put another potato in instead of blowing it out and whatever. Um, it wasn't working properly, so I ripped it out and just do it manually. But I'm going to. Uh, I've started a blog post about all of this. It'll have all the models, all the everything. It'll include this guy for blowing it out. Um, it'll have proper values so that it actually uh, works. And yeah, so basically to, first you close the app, just so you don't. <laughs> um, and then you just manually rotate that so the holes open and you spray air in here. Um, so while I do this, questions? Little fan. So it does actually, um, it returns some basic stuff. I could, but I hate HTML. Um, <laughs> really, really, really nice. You can, it would take me longer than like it would to make a Unity app. And I mean, yeah, if I can do something quicker and hackier, then yeah. Uh, the back there. So, look, um, I basically did this all with stuff I had at home. When I build little stupid things, it's generally based on what I have at home. Um, and I've blogged a bunch about like random stuff like this. And yeah, it's generally just normal stuff. Um, also, it was kind of cool to make a little mechanism that rotated back and forth. Um, same like someone asked why the Kerbal Space Program guys made a, like built a controller instead of just using a Xbox control. Because they can and it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a 3D printer? Yes, I do. That that time lapse video was was of the of the three D printer. Okay. That was called uh, Autodesk Fusion three sixty. Okay. So we put stress ball, stress ball back in. Okay, so now there's two, two things. Either there was too much fuel or there was too little fuel. So we did it at 400. Um, Hands up for going higher. Hands up for going lower. Yeah, OK, there's more lower. So let me just open this app. It was probably just that you pressed the button wrong, really. OK, I'm going to try it at 300. Yeah, you can press it. Yeah. The red button. Let's go. Well, this is a super disappointing end. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so uh, what time does my talk end? Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So there's one more talk after this, and then there's the networking thing. Um, I'm sure the hotel won't care if we blow stuff up in the grassy area. Um, I don't represent them. Uh, so like, 
after the talk, not during the talk, after the talk, if you guys want to like play around with it outside, we can, we can do that. Um, so let me just put up my... Um, let me just put this up. Okay, we've got five minutes. While you guys follow me on Twitter, should I do that again? Okay. Okay, so does anyone have more questions? Yes, uh, you at the back. So, um, no, so I actually tried this. You know you get uh, canned air. Turns out it's not air. Um, but if it was air, it would have worked great because then as it sprayed, it would be spraying two different things. It would be spraying the air and the whatever. Um, it's a great idea, but like those canned airs, they're like chemical something, something, so that doesn't work. Actual compressed air was once again like stuff I didn't have at home. Um, so I thought the, the little fan was a, a, a good compromise. There was a question here somewhere. There. So, uh, you remembered to ask, yes. <laughs> uh, so I made a game called Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse. It's the world's best mass llama slaughter, roguelike, lightish, couch cop, top-down, twin-stick shooter. And... It's available now on Xbox and Steam. Questions? There were a bunch more hands. Yeah. Sorry? Okay, so, yeah, hindsight, I should have written that down. Um, that roguecode.com, just go to blog.roguecode.com. Yeah. Um, I enjoy a good Playboy signature. <laughs> My wife was not impressed with our whole house smelling like a teenager's dorm. Um, what also worked, and is in the same size, is uh, gravity something, the blue can. Um, yeah, question. Yeah, lots of fluid, um, it's... After the beard incident, I, I kind of moved away from it. Um, s same with uh, car starter. That stuff is like pure ridiculous power. Um, and it's not actually, like you don't really want that unless you're going to start building the actual chamber out of steel. Um, you know, with much power comes much responsibility. <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, Okay, so that's still connected. Yeah, I would point it in that direction, but I don't really want to hit their ceiling and it'll end up doing that. And we can do that outside because um, it's just cars there. <laughs> okay, so I have a book to give away. It's called Hit Refresh by such a Nadella. Sorry? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we need to decide on um, a good question. Does anyone have a really smart question? So, I mean, this isn't actually an Arduino. This is a Node MCU. Um, it's just bootloaded with Arduino. So it's the same as using an ESP. This has an ESP8266 chip on it. Literally all this is is um, a breakout board around the ESP8266 with an FTDI header so you can plug USB into it. So, yes, you can use the, like, that Node MCU program or whatever it is. than this. 
Okay, I, I don't actually know which one. So, I mean, this question comes up a lot with Raspberry Pi as well. People are like, why aren't you using a Raspberry Pi? I'm like, it's like 600 times faster than you need. Um, it's not like we're hosting a web, we're literally hosting a web server. It's not like, <laughs> it's not like we're hosting a web server for lots of people. Um, so yeah, I mean, speed really isn't an issue here. But yeah, if that's faster and the same price, and has a 12 round. Get that. <laughs> um, OK, so I also have one of these to give away, which is the little chip there. If you are genuinely interested and are going to use this, not just because it's free, it's like 50 bucks, you guys, yeah. Um, so if you genuinely want this, you can ask a really smart question. Yeah, I've been building the game for three years. This was actually super stressful. I mean, the organizer, <laughs> you're a speaker, you know, the organizers only told us, um, like, what was it, six months ago um, that we had the talk. So, like, literally a day or two to write it. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, uh, I mean, I was jumping between like llama slaughter and um, food money, like uh, contract projects uh, and stuff like this. Now that the game's out, I have no job and I'll just do this. Um, so who would like to, you can't get the book because you're a speaker and you said I couldn't get your book. Okay, <laughs> who would like to press this? Okay, so there, you can press that. You can also decide, move the slider to whatever you want. 400 did not work, 300 did work. If you go lower, it's probably not gonna work. Press it better. Okay, next question. Uh, definitely, it was a time thing. I didn't know GDC was happening. I, w I assumed I had. <laughs> I assumed I had three weeks. Um, yeah, I didn't. Um, okay, we're probably out of time anyway. Um, so, like, three more questions. You get a book though. Oh, okay. Thank you, guys. You can come speak to me if you have questions.